What's up guys, Nathan Sutton back with another video and today we are talking about a principle that is so powerful that I believe if we could just get this right, it would take your life to a whole nother level and most importantly, getting you one step closer to becoming the person God created you to be. This principle is saying no to the negativity in our lives. It's so easy to get caught in the trap of going through life, focusing on things that will hold you back. Guilt, doubt, worry, resentment. It becomes a real issue when we dwell on these things and allow them to overtake our lives. They are taking up room for the good things that should be there. We were designed by God to be filled with the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, self-control. When you allow worry to take over, it steals your peace. And when you allow hatred to take over, it overshadows love. One of the main reasons so many people live a miserable life is because their heart and mind are poisoned with the wrong things. They are filled with regret over mistakes they've made in the past, bitterness towards someone who's mistreated them, worried and stressed out about the finances, jealous of someone better looking than them. And before you know it, you are filled with all of the wrong things and there's no room left for the fruits of the Spirit we were designed to live with. The scriptures say, give no place to the enemy. We believe that one of the main ways the enemy tries to attack us is through our thoughts and emotions. We are called to live by faith and not by sight. So when God tells us to give no place to the enemy, we believe he's saying to say no to bitterness, say no to doubt, say no to anger, no to regret. These thoughts and feelings can't come in and take over your life without your permission. I know that we all have negative feelings and emotions, but you have the option, the choice. We're not going to allow these things territory in your heart and mind and let it ruin your life and steal the joy and peace and love that God wants to give you. Yeah, we need to make a habit out of starting every day getting rid of all the negative in our lives. It may be a family member, someone who really hurt you and mistreated you. It's easy to give in and want to get them back and stay angry, but you have to be deliberate and say, no, 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 I am not letting this anger stay in my heart and ruin my day. I command all anger to leave in Jesus' name. They may have hurt you once, but don't let them continue to hurt you by staying mad. Being bitter and resentful is not hurting them, it's hurting you. It's taking a valuable place in your heart for the amazing things that God wants to fill you with. When you start your day, thoughts of worry may come, like I'm never going to get out of debt. What if the doctor has bad news? My situation will never turn around. You can't allow those thoughts to take root. Don't continue to dwell on those thoughts. Just say, no thanks. God has promised me that he works out all things for the good of those who love him. Life is too valuable and too short to be letting negative things hold you back from who God created you to be. One of the most famous men to have ever lived, King David, said in Psalm 103, God fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. What that means to us is that if you empty out the negative in your life, God will fill it with goodness. Empty out the worry and let God fill you with peace. Get rid of the negative things people have said about you and let God fill you with confidence. Empty out the fear and let God fill it with boldness and courage. Our question to you is, is God trying to fill you with these amazing things, but you're not letting them? You're so busy being full of resentment, jealousy, and insecurities. We're challenging you today to get rid of all of that. Like David said that the Lord renewed his youth, I believe the reason a lot of people aren't young and strong in heart and spirit is because they are filled with the negativity of life and the lies that Satan feeds them. There have been studies done that show that being angry, bitter, or resentful actually shortens your lifespan. Proverbs says that a heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rottens the bones. The amazing thing is that even though our body may age, our spirit never does. Yeah, you can be a hundred years old and still young and lively at heart. My grandma lived to be a hundred years old and she was as happy and youthful as just about any teenager I've ever seen. I always remember her saying, if I grumble, I deserve a whooping. You know in a hundred years she's had challenges. People have mistreated her. She's done things she wasn't proud of. Circumstances have happened and people have offended her. But she didn't hold on to them. She kept saying, thanks, but no thanks. I'm a child of God, and like David, God filled her with the goodness of his spirit. Now we realize this is easier said than done. You might be saying, well, Nathan Sutton, that sounds good and all, but I have a serious medical condition, and I'm worried about my health. I'm $100,000 in debt. I'm a single mom. My children are doing drugs and sleeping with their boyfriends. Worry is a part of our life. Situations may be harder than others, but worry is a part of life, and these thoughts do come to us all. The secret is to not hold on to them. 
Realize that they're not benefiting you in any way and they're not moving you towards the person that God created you to be. I once heard that worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> Jesus promised us that in this world we will have trouble, but to take heart because he's overcome the world. He promised us trouble, but the issue is when you don't know what to do with the trouble. Too many people hold on to the troubles life throws their way. They live in guilt, shame, and stay bitter at people that did them wrong. That's going to poison your life. You can't keep the troubles from coming, but you can keep them from staying. David is known as a man after God's heart, but he made mistakes. One time he committed adultery and he had the lady's husband killed. For one year, he tried to cover it up and sweep it under the rug. He was so filled with guilt and condemnation that he actually became sick. Those toxins started to corrupt his life. He eventually came to his senses and confessed what he did wrong and repented and asked God to forgive him. And amazingly, his health was restored and his life started to turn around. We all make mistakes, but the biggest mistake of all is running from God and trying to hide what we did wrong. Repent, and that means to stop doing what you did and ask God to forgive you and start moving forward. Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. He will be sure to remind you of everything you've done wrong for the last 20 years. If you listen to him, you'll live a life of regret, thinking of all the things you should have done differently. Man, I should have been a harder worker. I should have treated my children better. I should have been more devoted to my spouse. We're not saying there aren't things we could have done differently. There always are. But what we're saying is, don't go through life looking in the rearview mirror, beating yourself up and living a life in regret. You can't do anything about your past, but you can make the decision to do something about today about right now. Today, right now. The second you ask God to forgive you, He forgave you. Maybe it's time for you to forgive yourself. Satan will do his best to make you think that God won't forgive you, remind you of everything you've done wrong. The beautiful thing is, it doesn't have anything to do with what you have done or haven't done. It's about what Jesus did. Amen, amen. And all of this sounds great and all, but sometimes it feels nearly impossible to get rid of all the negative thoughts and emotions. When someone mistreats us, it's human nature to want to hold on to it and become angry and bitter, to have animosity towards them. We think to ourselves, well, they don't deserve it. I'm not going to forgive them. As long as you have that kind of attitude and hold on to the hatred and bitterness, it's not affecting them, it's infecting you. Unforgiveness is like a cancer. It may feel good to hold on to it, but it will poison your life. We aren't saying what they did wasn't wrong. I know we have had many things done wrong to us, but we have to learn to let it go and release it. Let God be your defender. He will make your wrongs right. You don't have to worry about getting back at people. You're not the judge. God is. Give it to Him and He will vindicate you better than you could ever vindicate yourself. There's a national news story going around right now of a man named Both of Jean. He was in his apartment eating ice cream and watching TV. Sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> when a cop came in, she thought she was going into her own apartment and Botham was an intruder, and she shot and killed him. One of the craziest parts of the story is there's a video on YouTube of Botham's brother in court telling the cop that not only does he forgive her and wants the best for her, he doesn't even want her to go to jail for killing his brother. He then got up and embraced the cop with a hug. It's amazing to think what kind of weight was lifted off his heart in that moment. He could have gone the rest of his life with anger, bitterness, hatred towards this cop, like most people would have, but he made the decision to let go and let God do what only he could do. Yes. By the end of Jesus' life, he had been mocked by soldiers, betrayed by a disciple, falsely incriminated, beaten, whipped, and now he was hanging on the cross wearing a crown of thorns. Right before he breathed his last breath, he did something incredible. He could have just let that be the end for him and died right then and there before going to heaven. But before he did, he had to say one last thing. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They didn't even ask to be forgiven. More than anyone, they didn't deserve it. But he was showing us and leading by example how we should release these impurities and negative emotions in our lives. Every morning you wake up, empty out the unforgiveness, empty out the guilt, empty out the shame, condemnation, discouragement. And when these toxins come in, don't let them stay. Let them pass on through. And when you do this, we believe you're going to take your life to a whole new level with more peace, more joy, healing, and wholeness, and be that much closer to the person God created you to be. Amen. 
All right, guys, I hope that video was helpful to you. I know for us, that's been such a huge topic and the people in our lives, we just have seen that to be such a big issue. It's just holding on to these horrible things that we were never designed to hold on to. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment, be sure to subscribe. This is Nathan Sutton sowing seeds of truth, love, and inspiration one view at a time. And that was our video on letting go of the negativity.